be receptive because you see you can only in, in Tamil there's a saying Tan Padi Devam Padi you can only do to some extent finally you need to be re recipient of divine grace which will do the rest for you aspiration which you need to keep alive goodness generosity equality and peace you're very clear about the journey of life how can you die without completing the journey doesn't make sense And here's a quotation from Sri Aurobindo, adapted. Fulfillment, Purnata, Purnata. Trishna cannot be solved except from Purnata. And the original source from which you came is already Purnam. Purnamadam, Purnamidam, Purnat Purnam, Mudachute, Purnasya Purnamadaya. Another great Chanti Mantra. That is complete. This is potentially complete. If you take this away from that, what remains will always be complete. That's the inspiration. Insp inspiration to creatively express that potential that you all have. Plato said it's an expression of truth, beauty and goodness. In India we say, it's an expression of Satyam Shivam Sundaram. It doesn't matter which language, which part of the world. It's a joy to creatively manifest that unique purpose for which each one of us is uniquely born. Fulfillment is the ultimate aim and can come about only by the conscious unity of all diversities. With harmony between knowledge and will, with consciousness and force, soul and nature. And the more one is self-aware, the more will be one's capacity for this. We're running out of time, but this needs a huge description. We are here just to touch on these issues because uh, time is limited and I would like to have your questions. But really, this is our destiny. See, we are all feeling that we are separate from one another. But the source is what unites us all. And if you can be at that transition point where you are still connected to the source and still respect the multiplicity, you're at that crucial stage of development where you understand people and you allow, and people can live in absolute ignorance, but they have to walk, walk their own way. Evolution is like that. There's nothing to worry about. So for young people, this is a nice slide to know if you want to find out what will give you fulfillment, A, you must find out what you're good at, what you're talented at. B, you must have a passion, you must have energy. Uh, Abdul Kalam showed that energy at 80 plus. An undying energy because it's perennially flowing through you, what you love doing. And then there is something inside you, the divinity in you which actually tells you what to do, what you know to be truly your inner calling. There's an antaryami, we say, which knows, which is quiet, so you have to pay attention to it. But the noise of the outer world is so loud, in that cacophony, <laughs> we can't even listen to it. So you have to withdraw, you have to do tapas, you have to get into nivriti. And then, of course, there, there must be a need for what you're good at. There must be a social need. Now, we are all civil engineers here. There are so many social needs that are crying for fulfillment. Housing, infrastructure, water, dealing with wastewater. I'm just giving you a few examples. Or, in this context, wisdom. The greatest help you can give another individual is to enable that person to be self-realized. That's all possible. So find out what really keeps you going and there's no retirement from this. Here's a guy that many of you adore. He said this very well, Steve Jobs. And look at the design. He's put himself there in the apple. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living somebody else's life. Who could live or breathe if there were not this delight of existence, the ethereal in which we dwell? Delight is ananda, you know. The source is 
full of ananda, sat, chit, ananda. From delight all these beings are born, by delight they exist and grow, and to delight they return. This is completion, this is fulfillment. If we learn to live within, we infallibly awaken to this presence within us, which is our more real self, not the outer superficial ego self, profound, calm, joyous. Life is turbulent. There's a physical, there's a vital, there's a mental, always disturbing us. And it can take us for a ride and we get stressed. So we need to be anchored in something that protects us. In the Indian tradition, this is called Purusha and this is called Prakriti. This is quite hidden. And the real challenge of life is how to engage with life's challenges skillfully and joyously with love and compassion, staying anchored in peace and wisdom. That's it. And this each one of us has to discover by ourselves. But you have to center yourself in the eye of the storm. Because stability is there and the guidance you get is from there. Eckhart Tolle, who wrote that fantastic book called The Power of Now and Stillness Speaks, says this. When you lose touch with inner stillness, you lose touch with yourself. When you lose touch with yourself, you lose yourself in the world. Your innermost sense of self, of who you are, is inseparable from stillness. So this is a great balancing act. And that's what makes it so adventurous. And Socrates says, everything the soul endeavors or endures under the guidance of wisdom ends in happiness. So how do you know what is right or what is wrong? Finally, only you, the deepest part of you, can tell for sure. Hmm? The kingdom of heaven is in you. I'm ending this with an invitation for those of you who are interested to take up these courses. Hmm? The first course, which is running full. In fact, there's a huge demand and we have to shortlist and only the most deserving get this, so it's called self-awareness. Some of the classes we used to hold outside under the shade of the banyan tree. It's the best place to, to learn. Half the learning is just listening to the birds. But now we have 108 students plus two auditing, 110. Every seat of Vishweshwarya's seminar hall is filled. So we can't, probably we'll sit out only one day. And there's an advanced course by the way, this course, the objective is to enable students to understand self-awareness based on traditional Indian wisdom and modern approaches, to learn and to find inspiration, take responsibility for one's inner life, to live with integrity and contribute creatively towards the well-being of all. And the advanced course is Spirituality at Work, which is, by the way, the motto of IIT Madras, Siddhir Bhavati Karmaja. Uh, but it's called Integral Karma Yoga. Watch this.
It's late, but I think one or two questions we can take. I gave you the picture of the post and the flag. The post is always stable. The post is where your center is. The post is where you can connect to your deepest, innermost part of your being which people call the soul. If there's any one you can trust, it's that soul, no, nothing else. Hmm? To be connected there is, if you want to use the language of the Gita, is to be yukta. Yukta means to be yoked. Yoga really means to be connected with that source, with that divine source. The that's why I began by saying it's necessary to develop a silent mind. There are lots of practices you can do to get, first to get exposure to that, to get contact with that. Life, the journey of finding fulfillment ultimately is developing a complete being at inner peace. You can be engaged in the most horrendous situation, but you should never lose that peace. Just like in a cyclone, the eye is always still. And in a self-awareness course, all the students know that we frequently get into conflicts, get into the box. And the harsh reality is, until you can find your heart at peace, whatever you do is going to be a mess. Whatever because you are stuck in a trap, it's called the ego trap. You must find a way first to come out of that box. You can do it intellectually if you are strong, if you have a pure mind. A pure mind is a mind which is able to be free from the vital forces. The vital forces keep telling you, it's his fault because of that. So you are not able to come out and see everything neutrally. Being able to see everything neutrally is called the witness consciousness, the Sakshi Bhava. So we must nurture, it's a muscle that you have to nurture, just like you go to the gym and you work on yourself and develop your physical muscle. The muscle of objective impersonal witnessing is something that we have to consciously develop. We have to develop it in good times so that it helps us in the worst times. Kabir Beautiful Doha. Dukh mein sumiran sab karein. When you are in difficult times, then only you remember to do 
these things smaran dukh mein sumiran sab kare sukh mein kare na koi when things are well off you don't do these things jo sukh mein sumiran kare those who actually do sadhana who do these practices when they are young and healthy and and fit to dukh kahe ko hoy they know how to deal with the situation but i'm giving you a very simplistic answer because it's not possible but certainly the very fact that you got into the problem if you go by what abdul kalam says is precisely for you to to win you may not win first time but life's journey is you keep getting into the same pattern you would have noticed you're getting into the same pattern again and again and again because you're repeating the same thing mothers shouted their children and say how many times i've told you not to do it and every time it's failed so the first thing the mother should do is to drop that pattern it doesn't work and you should also have the empathy to see what's happening to the other person when a child hears all that the only thing that child wants to do is to close the ears and not listen to that's why all our traditional methods which we are stuck to don't work so the ability to drop to die to that and to invite something new is the joy of living i have kind of in a deflective way try to answer your question one more question and then we'll go for tea it's not that you don't have questions you have to find self awareness why you are not able to ask please It's a wonderful question you pose. See, what is Brahman? You 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 said Aham Brahma. So Brahman is everything. It means individuals at all levels of consciousness. It doesn't exclude anything. It recognizes the dynamic living process of life. The fact that the awakening has not taken place in billions of people and only in a few. is because the layers of ignorance are so thick and so vast that it takes a while to learn and penetrate and break through there is apparently an unconscious process of evolution which takes long times it's not a quick thing we are used to getting quick results so the answer to the yeah, so it makes sense see i have a student i didn't ask for those I have a class of hundred students. They are all at different stages of evolution, but they are still my students, and that's my Brahman. I have to deal with them, and I try to discover the right instrument for the right student to enable. It's an inner awakening. As far as cowardice is concerned, do it your way. Hmm? If you can find a braver way of doing it, by all means, do it. the proof of the pudding is in the eating if you had listened carefully to what was said right from the beginning life is in the present moment not in the future so you need to have the courage to live in the present moment you have to deal with the situation in the present moment not because somebody said in the future you will become enlightened your problem is now so i i hope you're not leaving this hall with the message that you can you might get something at the end of the day because somebody promised it in some holy book certainly not it's useless life is to be enjoyed right now let me ask you right now are you not free right now is it not beautiful right now okay next moment also it's going to be beautiful next moment also why not so you can on the only this moment is real you understand what i'm saying and something intuitively tells us that this beauty this ananda that you get in this moment is actually an everlasting thing 
and you can always get it. When you discover who you truly are, you cannot forget it. You'll get it. So it's not in a distant future. And the distant future is a process of purification and mastering everything. But getting the flag post is immediate. If you want to perfect everything and all, it may or may not happen, I agree with you. But where's the question of cowardice and all coming? Right now you're failing in the test of life, but not by not fully solving the problem that you're facing. Right now you're a coward. So things can, are not going to get better by thinking that the alternative is also cowardly. Do it any way you can. It doesn't matter. You can have your own theory. These are not theories. So we are, you, you have to be open-minded and rather reject and dismiss because sometimes you end up throwing out the baby with the bath water. Do it your way. If that way gives you fulfillment, that's the perfect way. That's the way I put it. Your way. In fact, it has to be done your way. And that's life. It, it has to be an original discovery. It cannot be something uh, borrowed from others. I think it's late. So we can chat any amount of time, but the, I want you to go with the message that life is fantastic. Life is to be lived every moment. Challenges are welcome. And if we get into difficulty, help is always available in some form or the other. We have to seek it. it may your journey succeed. It will succeed. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Menon. It's my uh, honor to thank the gathering. Uh, first, I thank uh, today this, our beloved speaker, Professor Devdas Menon, who in this short notice kind of agreed and uh, came up with this uh, wonderful lesson, which we learned together today. Uh, I would like to thank, from, on the behalf of CA, uh, Professor Meher Prasad, uh, head of the department, Department of Civil Engineering, to uh, kind of initiate, plan everything, and he's the motivation behind this, today's this gathering and this wonderful experience we uh, kind of had. I want, would like to thank uh, uh, Professor Arul Jachandran from the Meter, who kind of, with the, just we just called and he came for sharing his thoughts. So thank you, sir. I just want to thank all the faculty colleagues, students who gathered today. I hope as Sir Professor Meher Prasad told in the beginning that we'll have this kind of meetings, but we hope that we'll not have the reason for that meeting. We'll just have the meeting. I hope that strongly. Okay? We work for it. Thank you very much. <laughs>